Hello everyone, this is Dr. Mihir Shah once again with another video. In this video, we are going to learn how to solve problem sum based on time of supply under goods and service tax under the subject indirect tax for all the TY BFM SEM6 student. A very important topic from the exam point of view. We will first take up some rules and thereafter we will be solving some based on time of supply. So again, again, all the TY BFM students see that you will go through this video very carefully. The name of the chapter is time of supply. Now under time of supply, we have two parts. One is time of supply of goods and second time of supply of services. So we are going to start with the very first part, time of supply of goods. Now under this, uh, there are multiple types of sums that can come. Okay, So we are going to start with the very first type. Time of supply when there is no movement of goods. Okay, very important. If there is no movement of goods, how to solve the sum? Okay, and how to identify that particular sum? Okay, time of supply when there is no movement of goods. There are some rules that needs to be noted down. Okay, so this will be the best thing will be once I once you all go through the video, see that you all just note down the heading and the rules and keep it with yourself. Okay, because that is very important. Okay, the time of supply uh, for goods when there is no movement of goods is the earlier of the following time of removal or when the goods are made available and date of invoice. Okay, so here the rule you have to remember this particular rule. Okay, we have you know the date from where the goods are made available and the invoice date, whichever is earlier will be your time of supply. Okay, when there is no movement of goods, so the key is this goods made available. Okay, so if you look into the question, there's one question which we are going to solve. Uh, serial number is given, date uh, on which goods are made available. This is the key word. The moment you see goods are made available, understand this is a sum where there is no movement of goods. We have been given date, uh, date when the goods are made available, date of invoice and date of payment. Now, in order to identify the time of supply, the rule is date when the goods are made available or invoice whichever is earlier so we have to compare between these two okay a and b and whichever is the earlier date that will become your time of supply this chapter doesn't have any solving part okay? you just have to identify the date so 7 december and 30th december the one whichever is earlier is your time of supply so in our, the first example your 7 december is your time of supply in the second Again, we only have to compare the first and the second column. 5th December and 24th Feb. Feb comes way early than December, so my answer will be 24th Feb 21. 16th November and 26th November. 16 is the earlier date, so 16th November is the time of supply. 28th Feb and 22nd Feb. Okay, 22nd Feb is the earlier date, uh, so we will consider that as your time of supply. 15th Jan 2022 and 26th Jan. So 25th is the earlier date, so your answer will be 25th Jan. And 7th March and 23rd Feb. Feb comes earlier, so your time of supply will be 23rd Feb 2021. Okay, very simple. So you have to keep in mind when there is no movement of goods, okay, date when the goods are made available and invoice. Whichever is the earlier date, that will be your time of supply. That's rule number one or the you know, first type of sum when there is no movement of goods. I hope everyone have understood it. Very simple. Okay, so we'll jump to the second type. Time of supply involving payment made to the supplier. Okay, so now there has to be some payment made in the question. So now let us see how to solve that sum with some rules. Okay, time of supply involving payment made to the supplier. The rules are it has to be earlier of goods made available to the recipient and date of invoice or the last date on which the invoice has been issued. Okay, so now in our question, they are giving you date of invoice, last date of invoice, payment to the supplier, credit in bank account. The moment, the moment you see payment in supplier's book, understand it is a sum involving payment made to the supplier. So in our case, date of invoice and last date of issue. Okay, there, there are no goods made available in the question. So date of invoice and last date of invoice. Okay, among these two, whichever is earlier, will be your time of supply when we have payment made to the supplier you know some based on payment made to the supplier so your time of supply will be in this case 11th may and 12th may so 11th is the earlier date so my time of supply will be 11th may 20th 20th july and 15th july so 15th july is the earlier date so 15th july is the answer Okay, 26, 8 and 28, 8. 26 is the earlier date. That becomes the time of supply. 26, 9 and 28, 9, 28 and 26. Okay, so 26 is the earlier date. 
we have 28th 10 that is 28th October and 24th October so 28th 24 24 is the earlier date so 24 October will be your time of supply and last 20th June and 22nd June so 20th is the earlier date so your answer will be 20th June okay so again very simple okay you just have to remember the type of sum how will you identify it? You have to look at this. Whenever there is payment in the supplier's book, it is always based on payment made to the supplier. And the rule is date of invoice or last date of invoice, whichever is earlier. That was second time. Now we'll jump to the third one. I hope everyone have understood this. Okay. Third one, time of supply involving the movement of goods. Okay, very important from the exam point of view. This is very important from the point of view. Now the rule is. When there is movement of good, date, you know, it will again be the earlier of time of removal and date of invoice. If you look carefully in the question, there is date of invoice, date of removal. Okay, then there is delivery and payment. But the rule is, the moment you see removal, understand it is movement of goods. Rule is date of invoice and invoice, whichever is earlier. Or date of invoice and removal date, whichever is earlier, that will become your time of supply. So, 26 Feb and 18 Feb. Uh, sorry 26 December and 18 December 18 is the earlier date so my time of supply will be 18 December 16th March and 14th March 14 March is the earlier date 6 Feb and 10th Feb so 6 Feb is the earlier date so we'll note down as 6 Feb 25th May and 23rd May so 23rd is the earlier date we will note down that as the time of supply Okay, again, very simple. Okay, you just have to follow the rules and based on the rule, we just have to note down the date. Okay, there is no calculation as of in order to get the answers. Okay, it's just purely based on, you have to, you know, you have to identify what type of sum it is and you just have to follow those rules. Okay, so that was third when there is movement of goods. Next, uh, time of supply in case of continuous supply of goods. Now remember, whenever there is continuous supply of goods, uh, the column, you, you have to identify from the column point of view. Okay, uh, When there is continuous supply of goods, the time of supply will be earlier of date of invoice. So in the question, there will be date of invoice. Date of statement of account. This is the most important part. Date of statement of account. This is important. The moment you see date of statement of account, remember it is continuous supply of goods and date of payment so now it is best of three okay the earliest of three the date of invoice date of uh, statement of account and date of receipt of payment whichever is earliest in the continuous supply of that will become your time of supply okay so 15th november 6th november and 10th november the earlier among them is yes 6th november 4th October, 4th October and 6th October. So in, in, in our case, 4th is the earliest date. So earlier will be 4th. 16th December, 12th December, 28th December. So the earliest is 16th December. 26th October, 25th Jan and 25th Jan. So now these are in, in the year 2000, 2022. This is 2021. So yes, 2021 well, our date will be the earliest. 15 December, 11 December and 12th Jan but that 12th Jan is of 2022 the earlier one we'll have to check from these two uh, so it will be yes 11th December okay that's my time of supply under continuous supply of goods again this is very simple just have to follow the particular rule this was uh, you know type based on continuous supply of goods Okay, now the fifth type is time of supply of goods under RCM, also known as reverse charge mechanism. Now, under uh, you know time of supply under RCM, the rule is uh, it has to be the earliest of date of receipts of good. Okay, so we will put the point. Okay, we have date of receipts of good, uh, date of payment. So we have date of payment and date immediately following 30 days from the date of issue. The date of issue is given of invoice. We need exactly 30 days ahead of that date. So we need one more column immediately, you know, 30 days from A. So from invoice, calculate 30 days and we'll have to make a new column. And once you get that column of 30 days, so it was 28 December. So 30 days ahead will become 19 Jan 2022. Okay, once you get that, the rule is very simple. Okay, date of receipt of goods, date of payment and 30 days from the date of invoice. Whichever is earlier will be your time of supply. 
so 16th november 29th november and 19th jan the earliest is 16th november so my time of supply will be 16th november next 15th feb 14th feb and 16th march so feb is the earliest so 14th feb is your time of supply next 30th 8th uh, 15th 15 2 and 23 9 so the the earliest month is the feb of month so the date of supply or time of supply will be 15th feb okay next 24th august 30th august and 5th june june is the earliest among them so yes june cut it will be the time of supply uh july we have 6th july 6th august and 5th august july is the earliest so my time of supply will be 6 7 okay so under rcm remember you have to create another column which will be 30 days from the date of invoice an immediate 30 days and then you have to compare the column b c and d in order to get your time of supply okay so now these are all your time of supply under goods now we will start how to solve some when you have been given to find time of supply of services okay only two types are there so not a big big thing so under that very first type time of supply of service in normal cases very important some okay from the exam point of view okay there are specific rules here now the time of supply shall be earliest of number one if the invoice is issued within the time as per section 31 that is 30 days on the date of provision uh, then the date of invoice or date of payment whichever is earlier will be your answer and if the invoice is not issued as per the uh, section 31 then date of provision of service and the date of payment okay whichever is earlier will be considered okay so it, it, it looks a little complicated but let's not okay think of this very carefully okay date of provision of service or date of service date of invoice date of payment three things are given to us first rule is we'll have to create another column which will be 30 days from the date of provision uh, from the date of invoice okay and called as time limit this is 30 days from the date of invoice so uh, sorry this is for, uh, 30 days from the date of provision of service okay so this is important time limit for issue of invoice that the heading will be a time limit it will be from the date of provision whatever provision or service is there 30 days ahead of that get the dates now you have to make a comparison between invoice price and time limit okay whether invoice is received within the time limit or not okay we'll have to do that and so you can get two answers if yes we'll have answer one and if no then there will be another answer for that okay so check of this compare date of invoice with time limit your time limit was 15th october date of invoice was 5th october the rule is if it is you know it, if it is earlier than the time limit or after time limit now if you look carefully the date of invoice is before the time limit so it is written that whether invoice is received within the time limit yes it is within the time limit it shouldn't go ahead if it go ahead then there's another rule if it is before the time limit or on the time limit there's another rule okay so time limit so answer is whether invoice is received within the time limit yes because 5th october comes before 15th october so we'll write yes if yes the rule is date of invoice and date of payment whichever is earlier okay so that is the comparison between b and c so 5th october and 6th october whichever is earlier that will be 5th october so my answer will be 5th october second one your invoice is 5th november and time limit is also 5th november so it is on the time it is on the time so i'll write yes it is on the time if it is on the time the rule is invoice or payment whichever is earlier so 15th november and 21st october so 21st october is my answer next 26 november and 22nd november 22nd was the limit the invoice has crossed the limit so it is not within the time limit no so if it is not then the rule is date of provision and payment whichever is earlier so a and c may comparison may okay so invoice is not within the time limit so if it is not then it will be date of provision and date of payment so 20th october and 30th november october is the earlier date so my answer will be you know 23rd october next invoices on 16th october and time limit is 5th november so it is well in advance well ahead so yes it is ahead so if it is ahead date of invoice date of payment whichever is earlier so 16th october and 1st october 1st october will be the answer last one date of invoices october 11 and 
the time limit is 7th uh, sorry 10th november and 7th november so it is after so there is it, it is, hasn't been put within the limits so no so date of provision and date of payment whichever is earlier will be your time of supply so we have 8th october and 11th uh, sorry 16th november so 8th october will be my final answer this is very important from the exam point of view okay time of supply of service in normal cases okay i hope everyone have understood this one last type time of supply of services in case of reverse charge mechanism very simple date of payment as entered in the book so we'll have earlier of date of payment date on which payment is debited debit in the bank account and immediately 60 days from the date of issue so from the date of issue of invoice we'll have to create another table which will ask 60 days ahead ka dates okay from date of invoice exactly 60 days ahead and now we have to just make a comparison in b c and d whichever is earlier will be your time of supply 16 jan 11 jan 15 jan 11 is the earliest so 11 jan 11 jan 10 jan 15 jan so 10 is the earliest 11th feb 17th feb 17th april feb is 11th feb is the earliest 27th feb 26th feb 27th march 26th feb is the earliest 3rd april 2nd april and 5th april 2nd april is the earliest okay so this is how you all have to solve some based on time supply of service in case of rcm so these are all various types of sums and you know types of sums and the rules okay how you all can solve those particular sums based on time of supply or you know a very important topic from the exam point of view i hope everyone have understood those topics see that you all note down those topic headings along with the rules and try solving it once once you all solve it once and then pick up any sum from the textbook you all will be able to solve those sum okay chalo with that we will be ending this video here i hope everyone have understood it thank you